No matter how fucked up the SJWs describe it, or how little some of them really know about the subject they catchphrase conversations into, this country really was as bad and is as bad as they say, and yes, there are many industrialized countries that are much, much worse. And many other things people talk about are as bad as they say as well. Even the men going their own way, MGTOW, are right about a lot of this stuff. The only thing that each group is consistently wrong about is the idea that the other perspectives are completely wrong about everything. They're right all at the same time, once you subtract their ideas about other sides. This is why I can agree with a feminist about the roles that men are pushed into being, while also complaining about child custody issues and social expectations about what men are supposed to be doing in a marriage, and even the expectation to marry at all. Sometimes the most absurd thing that a person can notice can actually be true. Whether it's something we should focus on or not is debatable, as we are poor multitaskers. We can only focus on so many things at a time, and technically not even that is actually true, but people make it look like they are. We don't actually multitask. We do seem to put into a loop a set of things that we can focus on, but we don't really multitask. Every new set of things you're supposed to pay attention to takes that much more focus away from the things that you really need to get done, or want to get done. This is currently one of the biggest things that makes most workplaces so horrible now. We fill people's minds with all these social rules until they become unproductive. People can't just be people anymore. The social rules that must be followed now, in contrast to how rules had to be followed in the 1980s, is enormous. It restricts the way that customer service jobs can be friendly to other workers and to other customers. It restricts the fun people can have at their jobs in almost any field. And maybe to you, workplaces should never be fun. But it is found that the workplaces where people enjoy their jobs, they're actually more productive. I'm not saying it has to be a party or anything, but at least not be something people dread going to. And most of these restrictions we have everywhere is, of course, because of us being a sue-happy society. People will sue for the most ridiculous of things. It's why we have warning flammable on matches and fireworks. Why, the food you are about to enjoy is very hot, is written on the wrapping paper for fast food tacos. It's why playgrounds for elementary school kids look like enlarged toddler toys. But in the end, Many people still just end up doing their own thing. None of these sensitivity training courses people have to take are helping in ways that are worth the loss of productivity. People are going to continue to have their same beliefs. People are still going to look at women this way and black people that way and gay people this other way over here. As long as people aren't going out of their way to treat people poorly, this stuff is ridiculous to bombard the workforce with. I mean, some people get offended at being called hun or honey so people can't say it at work anymore. So, as there may be white privilege and cis-heteronormativity, there's also a chance that those white nationalists might be just slightly right, that possibly, on a genetic level, white people might be almost inconsequentially and practically superfluously better at taking other people's things and making them their own. But then those same nationalists wouldn't be willing to look at the social ramifications that all the things they take from often simply become a fad, something completely temporary, which gets crumpled up and thrown away when the next new moneymaker thing gets taken from somewhere else. This isn't racism. This isn't the dreaded, horrible, cultural appropriation. This is capitalism. And you're right to complain about these things in capitalism, Stop trying to relabel it to promote your group that you want to consider elite. Oh, it's, it's about racism. Oh, no, it's really about sexism. No, no, it's about capitalism. It's about some of the negative things that can happen in a capitalistic society, particularly when it's not being regulated enough. Right now, however, capitalism offers some of the best life that one can have under currently available government types. Currently available. There are other combinations of government types that could work, but we seem to be so nationalist here in the United States that we can't even seriously look or discuss other government types without screaming stuff that sounds like it came from the 1950s. But the conversations usually never even get to that point. People continue to complain about the things that are true, 
but they stem from problems with capitalism, not at the catchwords and catchphrases that are the current new fad. If it's not sexism, it's racism. If not that, it's hating on white people. It's sexist, it's homophobic, it's transphobic. But most of these issues revolve around problems with capitalism. They're attacking the symptoms instead of the problem. We can make capitalism work for us. We can make it work for everyone. But we need to figure out what is actually wrong before we can fix the damage. So let's listen to all sides so we can get to the bottom of what needs to change. Stop paying attention to what offends you about someone's message. Pay attention to the things that make sense out of what they're saying. That's the only way we're going to get answers to problems that plague the human condition. I don't think most people, though, at least on this platform, are trying to get those answers, though. Most people just want attention and money. Attention? Attention? Money. Money.